Okay, so I got contacted by Seed Studio uh, a while back and uh, they contacted me initially about the Wio terminal, uh, which is this mini screen with all sorts of features on it. And I, I wasn't entirely sure if it was right for my channel, but uh, I was interested. Uh, and then they gave me an email uh, soon after, uh, before I'd responded, and uh, said that they had this cooling fan, uh, which uh, they would like me to have a look at as well. And the cooling fan is, is right up my street. And uh, so they ended up giving me uh, some store credit to, to buy some stuff that I wanted. So I haven't paid for any of this. Uh, this is given to me uh, on the proviso that I do a video. But I'm happy to do that because I do get offered a lot of stuff now. And uh, quite a lot I refuse because it's not really for my channel. And it's not really my interest. And there's no point in me having loads of gadgets that, that I don't want or, or need. But a lot of the pie stuff I really like. Uh, and this Wio terminal, I'm definitely going to do a video on it separately. Uh, I just haven't quite worked out what to do on it. Um, you might have seen uh, quite a few YouTubers have had this. Uh, and it actually has an operating system in it. So uh, it's this... It, and I, th I actually thought originally that it was going to just fit straight on the Pi because I saw that they had the GPIO, but actually it doesn't fit straight on there. I think you must have to need some sort of extender to be able to get it on there. But it's a good size. You imagine if it, if it does go there uh, to be on the Pi. So I was thinking it would be quite a handy little tiny screen uh, for certain applications. You can see here, this is actually a game. Uh, and with the game, you've got start, jump and shoot. Uh, and basically, it's better two-handed jump and you can shoot things that are coming towards you. Uh, and this actually comes pre-installed, so you don't actually have to do anything for that. That is already on there. Um, but, uh, but you can also put separate things directly onto this, or you can use it with the Pi. But I really need to read more about it, because I haven't got a clue, really, uh, on this. It's, it's, not my, uh, it's not my side of the Pi. But let's just turn it off. So obviously, the ice cooler fan. I'm interested in because uh, it's a lovely quiet fan. I haven't tried it yet, but uh, from things I've read, it's a lovely quiet fan uh, and it offers really strong cooling for the Raspberry Pi 4. And as I like to overclock, right up my street. So uh, it comes, these are all the bits that it comes with. Uh, when you get this sort of opaque plastic, there's just like a layer that you pull off. And I've found a good way to pull it off is to just get the edge of one of these little Phillips screwdrivers and then it comes right off. So just a little tip there. Uh, so I'm not gonna do this one so far. I'm gonna concentrate first of all on this extra one. And this wasn't something that was offered to me. So let's move this out of the way. Because this is a case that is compatible uh, with the ice tower cooler. And the good thing about that is, well, it actually comes with a fan anyway. And it looks like it's got LEDs on the fan. I haven't, I haven't plugged it in. All I've done is put it in. And, and all you do is take a few layers off and then screw it back on. These little screws go in and hold everything in place. And it's nice and firm and solid. Again, you can pull this off to make it completely see-through, but I didn't bother. I quite, I quite like the opaque effect. Uh, it comes with a load of little heat sinks. I probably won't use those. Um, I don't know if, yeah, the ice tower obviously fits straight on. So because of that, I'm not going to use these heat sinks. I'm going to leave that for now. Uh, it's got some rubber feet to obviously raise it up. Uh, and if you're putting it on a surface, it's not going to scratch it. So you've just got some of these little bolts here. So what I think I'm going to do is uh, build that up. Oh, by the way, if so if I show that, I think what I'll do is, is show it zoomed in. I'll, I'll take a decent picture of it and show this zoomed in. But basically, this has got different configurations of things you can put on it. But you can see it there with the ice tower. Uh, so I thought it'd be nice to have something in a case because I have seen the ice tower where people have just got it loose or they've had to make their own case. So I thought it was quite handy to be able to do it like that. I think I'm going to build it up and then do a bit of testing on this first of all. Uh, and then once I've done that, I can then take that off and in another video, I'll cover the ice tower cooler and I'll really go in for the overclocking. So it looks like it's this way up from the pictures. And the GPIO, where's best to have the cable? Maybe there, because the, uh, the voltage pins are on that side. So I need to take that bit off. Okay, so those have gone in nicely. So it's not that easy to see where the pins go. So let's just use my iPad to see what, uh, which one was it? One of these shows me. So let's have a look and see where the pins go. So it looks like it's the very last pin and uh, two in. So red cable on the very last pin and then two in. So let's pop that on. 
very last pin and two in. I should remember this by now, the amount, of, the amount of times I've put different fans and various things on. Right, so let's get those screws on the top. There we go, that looks like it's all on. Uh, I think I must take this off if I'm going to put those rubber feet on. Uh, so let's whip that off. Uh, might be a good idea to do it before we put the screws in. Uh, so, four rubber feet, that's the feet on. Yeah, and it feels nice and solid. Let's plug it in and see how it lights up. I've got no SD card in there at the moment, uh, so I can plug it in and unplug it without worrying. Plug that in, oh yes, that looks nice. Maybe I should have taken off this top, although with the opaque bit, maybe that's that makes it look a bit better because it kind of glows throughout it. And it's pretty quiet actually, for because it's a slightly bigger fan than some of the others that I've got. Uh, and I'm guessing this, it looks the same as the one that comes on here. I don't know if it is, but it does look like the same one that comes on that. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, certainly it looks cool. I like the fact that you can see through the Perspex, you can see the green and the red light flashing. Uh, and it's flashing because there is no SD card in there at the moment. But uh, that's blowing inwards, I would say. It's not blowing, yeah, it's not blowing out. So it's blowing in down on the uh, CPU. Uh, and the RAM and keeping it nice and cool the whole of the board. So I need to do some tests So let's get it plugged in and give it a go. Okay, so I had a comment on one of my videos from Nico D because I mentioned his video uh, and he Installed CPU frequency utilities and I haven't done this yet. So let's put that on here uh, Because this I can put it on performance and then it will max out the CPU And then we'll see how well it copes so let's install that, and uh, what was the second part? Pseudo CPU frequency set G performance. Let's copy that and put that into terminal as well. Let's try that first of all. Ah, here we go. So you see top right, uh, it says performance. So that, that is set to performance, but I didn't really do that in the right order because what I need to do is uh, overclock because this isn't overclocked yet and this is a four gig pi because uh, my eight gig is in my rack uh, case so yeah it's at 1.5 gigahertz at the moment so let's go for cpu let's go two three gpu 750 i don't normally do two three uh, and over voltage, I'm going to go with. Well, I was, I was told recently that you can go over voltage less. So let's go with six. That's a bit. No, six is maybe not. Well, let's go with it. Uh, so apply and reboot, and let's see what happens. Okay, so it doesn't seem to like that. So I've just taken the micro SD card out, and I'm popping it in this adapter, and then I'll put it in the bottom of my iPad. So let's go to. Well, let's screenshot that so it looks a bit better. The nice thing about iPad is screen recording is so good. So I go for config.txt. Uh, when Commander Pi does it, it does it all over the place uh, in where it does it in the config.txt. So you can see ARM frequency 2300. I'm happy with that. Uh, and then we've got GPU frequency 750. But I guess I didn't give it enough voltage. So I'm going to go with an over voltage of 9 because I often use 8 for 2147 on my 8 gig Pi. Um, but let's give that a try because it's a bit of extra power. So I can go back. I can quit out of that and then reboot my Pi. Yeah, that's rebooted at 2300. Uh, so let's do that bit again. So you see it says on demand. Let's put it on performance. Again, this is not, I'm only doing this to test the fan. I wouldn't normally do it in this way. So I'm now turning on performance. So now uh, my, uh, well it says 2.49, <laughs> it misreports it on the Pi 4. Since one of the kernel updates, it, it basically doesn't, doesn't say it's the right uh, clock frequency, but uh, it is on 2.3 because that's what I set in the config.txt. So sudo nano boot config.txt and let's just show you on here as well so you can see the nice thing about doing it this way is you can see what's changed by what's lit up so 2300 
then we've got uh, GPU frequency 750 and over voltage of 9. So now let's get oh, now let's get commander pi on there because that will tell us the temperature. Uh, so 44 degrees at the moment at 2.3 gigahertz. Obviously, I'm not doing anything at the moment, so that's probably not surprising. Let's get a browser window. Oh, and also I've got NeoFetch on here, which comes in Twister OS. Uh, I keep forgetting this isn't my usual Twister OS. This is just on an SD card I used for my uh, for Sega Rally. The good thing about this is that it tells you how much uptime you've had. So this has been on for three minutes and it's 44 degrees. So I can keep an eye on that. Uh, but what I'm going to do is just leave it playing while I while I edit the first part of the video. And I might leave this playing for ages. It all depends on if I have to pick up my daughter, if I have to pop out. I'm just going to leave it on uh, and uh, I'll double check before I go out that it's not getting hot. So let's go for YouTube and let's play this long video playing old FIFA online because it's an hour and a half long. So what are we set to? Let's go for 1080 and just leave that playing and see what happens. Oh, we're already up to 62 degrees, 61 degrees. That's interesting. But I am forcing it to run at 2.3 gig. Uh, so uh, we'll see how that fares. But also the good thing is we can then compare it to the ice tower cooler to see how much difference that makes. And I could have put the heat sinks on, but I didn't because I'd only have to take them on back off again uh, for the ice tower cooler. So let's try this later. So my Pi just rebooted. Uh, it's now reporting 3.8 gig. <laughs> so maybe I don't do the performance with the 2.3 overclock. Uh, yeah, that. So it keeps flicking to 3.8, which is obviously misreporting. Um, but uh, maybe I should play some uh, games that ran slower before and see if it really is 2.3, 3.8. So it's on on demand now. Uh, I think I'm going to not do the performance bit. I don't know how long it lasted. I guess I must have been doing a video for about 15 minutes um, and I heard a sound. Uh, it was a bit like white noise where uh, it was obviously the Pi switching off and the, uh, the speaker was plugged in with an analog cable. And uh, boy, will this will this restore to where it was? I wonder if it will tell me how long. No, it doesn't. No, it takes me back to the beginning. So I think I'm going to leave it on the on-demand setting, uh, but still leave it 2.3 and just see if that works. Maybe 2.3 is no good for my Pi. Um, I mean, I know that the Pi throttles itself when it gets to about 80 or 85 degrees, so I'm not worried about it. Um, but uh, yeah, let's let's see what happens playing the video like this. So take two. Okay, so failed again. Uh, it just restarted itself. So I think that um, we're not talking about it being stable at <laughs> 3.8 gig uh, or 2.3 that I set it at. So I think I'm going to go for my usual 2147. Uh, let's. So 2147 GPU 750. And the voltage I'm going to do is 6, because 6 generally works on my Pi 4 4 gig. Uh, so apply and reboot. Okay, so that's rebooted. Uh, so let's verify that. And so let's scroll down. Arm frequency 2147, uh, 750 and 6. Right, okay. So take however many it is. Uh, let's close that down. And again, go back. It will let me restore the pages, I'm guessing. So let's try again. And it's not that it's getting too hot. It must just be unstable at 2.3 on my Pi. Um, I have had 2.250 and I've played games on it and I've done it in another video and it was fine. But obviously 2.3, well, I might be getting the uh, over voltage wrong. So it probably needs more testing. But uh, if I don't do this for this fan video, it's just going to take me ages. So I'm just going to leave it at 2147 and leave it playing. Okay, so let's check back in and uh, what we've been playing for 49 minutes. Uh, so let's go on Commander Pi and it says 54 degrees. So yeah, it's keeping it nice and cool. No worries with that uh, at this 2147 overclock. So it looks really nice uh, and I'm really looking forward to putting that big ice tower cooler on it. Uh, that will be in one of my videos to come. But uh, yeah, so even this little case with this little fan, it's just a bit bigger than 
your standard case fan that you get, plus the fact that it's got those neon lights and it and it all on mine it just all stays blue uh, and it reflects through the pie. It does look really nice, so I do recommend it. Okay, so thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.